This is from my book, Down and Out New Orleans, Transgressive Living, The Informal Economy, with Columbia University Press. The Blue Nile on Frenchman Street, Stooges Brass Band, Maroney Strolling, in the deep, dense, and heavily moonlight night along Frenchman Street, just behind the Vucare, stumbling and bumbling and rumbling as New Orleans City bouncing from DBA to the Blue Nile music venues. It's all smoke and beer and whiskey and sex and sax and funk and trombone. The band starts in the third piece of the first set. It's Saturday night, everything clicking just right. Big man, saucerphone, just blows left and right, up and down, pumping these marching style while blowing the hell out of the brass. The crowd, hot and high and frenzied, swings forward, backward, left, right. It does not matter. Trombonist with cheeks popping out like a blowfish about to explode. Drummer desperately tries to maintain pace while they're beating on Kerouac's rolling crash of butt-scarred drums. Trombone man puts down his brass to shout, you gotta wind it up. And some about Michael Buck, the crowd cares less about the actual words because it's only the beat that means a damn thing. The drummer plays a series of hits, a steady quarter note conduit to a living, breathing culture like the Ogu giving passage to the spirit world of gods and their lambs. Mobs of revelers, bouncing beers and cocktails, spilling all over the place. A smoke hangs on the right side of my lip while a pretty one twirls like a well-balanced top from my left hand. And it's not about being cool or dancing or repetitive lyrics or the presentation of self or feeling as one collective connected to that proverbial something larger. There's a sense of sadness in, of the culture. But you have to work hard to become aware of it. You battle with the culture while rejecting your arrogant sense of self-importance. Arrogance is lost in the screaming trombones and the beating drums. So is all the sense of some essence of self or claim to authenticity or thoughts that you matter or illusion that you are part of something more. No one here tries to rescue individual subjectivity from the cannibalizing objective culture. It's about realizing the simultaneous destruction of the self to save the self, the creation of culture through resisting it, saving the world by realizing it needs to be obliterated. It's about the endless destruction to satisfy the human need for self-realization. The drummer beats and the trombones trombones, the funk and splash and shrieks, and no one knows yet that there's something here to get. It's as if it was music makers teasing out that moment of it. The first wave will know and the knowing will know and the knowing will know in a moving way until it spreads and begins to respond. A culture dance to commence between the makers and the receivers. This dialectical creation of music is a passageway to all that is frightening in history and myth and reality. Here in down and dirty New Orleans, we reclaim reified culture and give it our own sense of human identity. The mood suddenly changes when a sweat-drenched man with a long white t-shirt and baggy, saggy jeans demand that frenzy stop, if only for a moment. He's got a story to tell. It's about a friend, a guy named Shotgun Joe Williams. The police killed Shotgun Joe Williams. They shot him dead. The people don't know what to do, but listen and try to feel what the man at the microphone says as he evokes his sadness for love for his friend now dead. And no one really knows, except knowing that this has something to do with the culture and the music that is voice of the culture. It gives new meaning to culture, not as some unchanging noun, handing off knowledge from one generation to another, but as a verb that won't accept dying into the unfriendly night. Culture here in New Orleans slaps you in the face like the hot sauce that squirts in your eye from the sausage in your jambalaya. But if you look for it, even in the music, if you purposely look for it, it's as gone as the lover when the front door opens and the back door slams. It's a subtle reckoning, sometimes a feeble whimper, other times it's a collective sigh, so other times a collective roar of humans who say, yeah, you right. It's a collective in its pure drive of human individual will. They ain't willing together, mind you. They're willing independently, but they're willing all the same. And that is the culture. You, got, you get into the culture once you finally reject the city. The only then will you, the culture truly allow you into its labyrinth. The roaring and dancing and kissing and fighting, it's all isolated individuals collectively responding in creative ways to their shared structural circumstances. Shotgun said, yeah, you're right. He was part of New Orleans and the police killed him dead, but you can't kill culture and you can't kill Shotgun and a band, man's gonna make damn sure that he says he got killed by the New Orleans Police Department one day. The police stopped him as he was getting out of his car. The police shot him 17 times in full view of residents in the city's Tremaine neighborhood in New Orleans. And when we got to the scene of the crime and we asked police officers what happened, like what he did, what was wrong, they told us they owed us no explanation. They tell us that today this was not solved. So this song, why did they kill him? And we do it every time we do a show, y'all. So rest in peace. 
He don't wait for the reaction, just goes groove, matchstick fire, energy as locals bellow out like Paul Beer on a proverbial host going, oh, why? And the people are rocking. They don't know shotgun, but at this very moment, they want to shoot the bastard cop who shot them. And in the last line, nobody cares because everybody knows and the movement of the people and the movement of the band synchronized, not because the band says so or because people are trying, but because they're getting the movement out of the culture that lies dormant and deepest of souls. And the crowd, lily pasty white to charcoal black and every shade in between, stick their middle fingers up in the air and collectively scream with fingers in the air. We say, fuck the popo. So that was describing the scene, New Orleans Frenchman Street. And I hope with the Alt Project, you're able to describe the scene too. This week, you have a uh, article to read for bonus, but it's called Scrutinizing Street, Poverty, Morality, and the Pitfalls of Urban Ethnography. And that's where a French sociologist named Louis Cotant, who's a professor while I was at the New School for Social Research, and he critiqued Sidewalk by Michigan Year. He critiqued Code of the Street, Decency, Violence, and the Moral Life of the Inner City by Elijah Anderson. And he critiqued No Shame in My Game, The Working Poor in the Inner City. So here's a French guy who critiques three American sociologists, and he has a really good critique, and he blows them out of the water for talking about in instituting a bourgeois sense of white morality on a bunch of people that have been structurally oppressed in this place we call America. And so give that critique a look because it blows sociologists out of the water and I don't think they ever had a really good response from the weekly con. So if you want to know something about sociology, if you want to know something about critical sociology, I highly encourage you to read Scrutinizing the Street, Poverty, Morality, and the Pitfalls of Urban Ethnography from an outstanding critical perspective that is unlike most American presses you will ever meet. Um, so check that out. I made that a bonus discussion board because y'all got a midterm that I'm going to look at right now. I already talked to you about uh, that midterm project assignment, but I'm going to go over it again real quick for you. So it's called Exploring Urban Neighborhoods. And this assignment, the five double space pages, essay, something like that. You can, you know, you can go up to as much as seven, eight, you know, something like that. But try not to make it too much more. Um, where you provide a detailed description and analysis of an urban neighborhood. Uh, through the integration of ethnographic uh, observations, just simply observing, you're not talking to people, you're not interviewing anybody, nothing like that. Uh, you're just observing, you're using census data, uh, historical records, relevant sources, things I think I told you in the last video. Uh, the analysis should apply concepts from course readings to illuminate the social dynamics and patterns within the chosen neighborhood. And so you can choose any neighborhood uh, you want. I have there too the specified neighborhood uh, provided in the assignment prompt, which means any neighborhood uh, you wish uh, just make sure that the neighbor has uh, sufficient complexity to allow for in-depth analysis. Please don't pick the university. Get out of the university. Um, you can pick a, a more interesting uh, place, uh, an interesting neighborhood. Um, I, I don't really care which one, and it doesn't have to be in Wisconsin. It could be a neighborhood that you know well uh, at home. Uh, and I ask you to, uh, there's, there's um, basically 12 uh, main parts uh, to this City Life Midterm Project assignment, uh, where to pick neighborhood, make observations, look at census data, look at the historical records. And I already told you that you can go to lacrosse history, uh, lacrossehistory.org, and that is a pretty good resource for you. So you can use that. Uh, you can also use additional sources, newspapers, magazines, uh, local literature, all those things are important. Sometimes neighborhoods have their own newspapers, things like that. Uh, so you can check that out. Um, I'm sure there's also social media, uh, whether it's Reddit or whatever, that um, talks about a specific neighborhood uh, in the cross. So use social media, um, give it a demographic overview. That's pretty easy uh, to figure out. Um, you can use zip codes, wherever you want, but uh, get a good demographic overview, historical context as well. Um, apply some of these course concepts to uh, some of your analysis. Um, and look at, uh, explore some of the social interactions uh, and a little bit about community life in the neighborhood, church life, neighborhood life, uh, things like that. Uh, level of social cohesion in the neighborhood or tension. What are their focal concerns, things like that. What kind of challenges and opportunities exist in the neighborhood? Uh, things like that. Is it a food desert? You know, are there any social inequalities? Uh, do they have access to resources? Things like that. Uh, then a conclusion with uh, your findings and insights, your analysis. Again, I really talked about this in my last video, but um, saying a little bit more. Uh, make sure that if you, uh, whatever references you use, you cite them. Uh, obviously, if you don't cite any references, it's plagiarism. So any ideas or words that are not your own, cite them. Um, 
and then also, you know, I give some requirements for formatting and lens and evaluation criteria. And so uh, that's due at the end of the week. And um, uh, otherwise, uh, keep up uh, the good work. The class is going swimmingly well so far. And as always, uh, email for anything that you need. Thank you very much.